Welcome to the Keeping the Nostalgia Live show. I'm your host, Billy Powell. As you can see with us today, guys, is new Ball State Cardinal University basketball coach, Michael Lewis. Michael, thank you for joining us. I know uh, we had a little technical difficulties. Thank you for joining us and um, uh, spending a little time talking about uh, the state of Indiana, Ball State uh, University Cardinals, uh, your life in basketball, and I've got a little bit of a lag, but that's okay. And also tell us about your great decor that's behind you. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful, isn't it? Like you can tell, uh, it's what happens when you get a new job. Like you just, you have nothing behind you, but uh, um, that uh, decorating my office is way down my list of priorities right now as we as we start to build this, uh, this program back at Ball State to where we're competing for championships. But um, obviously really excited to be here. I think uh, it's a great opportunity um, to lead a program uh, in a state where basketball means so much. So um, something I'm really excited about. It's great to be back in Indiana and uh, really looking forward to kind of um, building off these first three weeks. You know, I had coach uh, Marty Simmons, a, a fellow Indiana Hoosier and coach Mike Woodson on, and um, they end up with brown cabinets in the back. I think that's probably what you're going to end up with background also. Well, you know, those guys are a little older than me now, you know, so I, uh, um, I would, I, I don't like the uh, principal's office feel, you know, in, in some, in some offices, you know, I don't want, I don't want our guys to come in here and feel like they're in the principal's office. So I may go for a little younger, uh, a, a little younger look, a little more modern. Um, you know, I, I don't need all the, all the workspace, um, you know, technology today, you know, allows you to do a lot of different things. So um, I'd kind of like to, if I, if I get to, my, my ideal choice, um, kind of more of a living room, family room feel in here, um, more kind of like recruiting lounge where, um, you know, kids and families can come in here and feel comfortable and not so, uh, not so stiff, if you know what I mean. Yeah, don't use scotch tape. I think Coach Woodson had scotch tape on, uh, on one of his doors. <laughs> well, I'm sure somebody somebody did that for Woody. Somebody probably trying to help him out, take care of him. So, uh, but no, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's been good, man. I'm excited. Uh, you know, the, the three weeks that I've been here with these guys has, has been great. You know, we've gotten three guys, um, you know, out of the portal that I, I think is, has been good, that they believe uh, in what we can do here at Ball State and the vision that I have uh, for this program moving forward. So um, there'll be some small changes here and there as we move along, um, office being one of them. But uh, that's like I said, that's that's down the list. I'm trying to trying to win games, um, you know, prepare to win games coming up here in November. I would expect nothing different. Um so uh, later on, I'll give you my address so you can put all that UCLA gear that you have left over in a box and send it to my charity. Uh, there's a lot of requests for that. There, there's been a lot of requests for that. I, I don't know if that's going to make the move, to be honest with you. Like it's uh, I got a closet full of um, UCLA stuff. I, it's funny. I had a bunch of. Uh, um, you know, we, when I first got there, we were Under Armour brand uh, and then we switched to Jordan. Uh, in the middle of my time there and so I had to kind of clean out and and restock but uh, uh, that UCLA gear out on the west coast pretty popular especially after you go to a final four and you know it's really interesting all, all of my interviews have I can always bring six degrees of separation back to the state of Indiana and we know that you know UCLA's program was built on a guy from the state of Indiana and coach John Wood um, so who first put a basketball in your hand or was it another sport a baseball or a football or a golf club who introduced you to the game of basketball when you were little I, I grew up uh, my mom and dad were both educators I'm sorry we got we got uh, graduate we're getting towards the end of the semester so they're starting to do some trimming outside they're starting to mow the grass for the first time in months I'm sure so uh, we got a guy doing some work outside but um, I've just always been around the game um, you know, for my, my father was, was a teacher, high school teacher and, and coach. Um, so like, instead of, you know, riding the school bus home, I rode the school bus to the high school and went to practice. Um, it was just always around the game and, and, uh, you know, kind of shooting on my own and just, just grew up in a very athletic family. My grandfather was the commissioner of the Indiana high school athletic association. Um, and so just, you know, with, with all those kind type of backgrounds, um, athletics always played a, a huge role. Uh, in my life, not only basketball, but, um, you know, I always felt like I was doing something, um, you know, some sort of sport, whatever season it was, whether we were playing tag football or we we're playing wiffle ball in the backyard or whatever. But um, basketball was was always my favorite and, and something that obviously I gravitated towards. 
And you guys had a basketball hoop at the house, right? Uh, doesn't everybody? I mean, you grew up in this state, like you see them everywhere, right? I mean, it's, I think it just kind of comes, uh, comes with the territory. I bought a house here in Muncie and, and uh, my, my daughters are volleyball players. They don't, they haven't uh, picked up basketball. Um, but uh, when my youngest saw that there was a hoop in the, in the driveway that the, of the house that we we're buying, she, she was excited and she doesn't, she doesn't even play, <laughs> but she's just excited to have, have a hoop in the driveway where she can get out there and shoot. So uh, it should be, should be fun. What are the first thoughts that came to your mind once you got the Ball State job? I mean, what, what, what highway do you go down? What, what are your, what are your first steps in taking that position? Uh, how do we win? You know, what, what do we have to do to win? Um, and, and then, uh, you know, it kind of, kind of build from there. Not, you know, not only how do we win, um, with who do we win with, um, what type of people do I want in the program? Um, you know, re reflect on everywhere that I've been as a coach and the, the people that I've been around. Um, I feel very fortunate to have, um, have the background that I have and the people that I've been able to work for and, and play for. Um, you know, I, I understand what success looks like. I understand um, how successful programs operate. I understand the type of people that are in those programs. Um, and how do I bring that to Muncie, Indiana, uh, was really my, my first thoughts. And if I didn't believe that we could do all those things here, um, I wouldn't be sitting here. But I, I think this is um, the perfect job for me um, to begin my career because of like, the location of being in Indiana and, and being so familiar with the state. Um, you know, from President Mearns to or my athletic director, Beth Getz, their vision for what an athletic program uh, and a basketball program in particular can do for this university um, kind of aligned with with what I feel like a basketball program can do for a university. And I don't you know, whenever my time here is done, uh, good or bad, like I don't want to just be a, uh, known as a basketball coach. Like I want to make a real impact on this university. I want to make a real impact on uh, the community of Muncie. Uh, and I think we can do that um, by building a very successful basketball program. What do you think of the transfer portal? Uh, it doesn't matter what I think. You better you better understand it and be able to navigate it because it's 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 real and it's a part of our um, it's part part of our college basketball. So uh, my opinion on it doesn't really matter. Um, but we have to um, be able to navigate that um, as a co as a coaching staff, um, and, and you just got to be aware that there's there's different opportunities that uh, are out there for for young men. Um, you know, when I took this job, we, I had four young young men in the transfer portal and you know in our first meeting like I said I'm not, listen I'm not upset that you're in the portal like you know you've gone two weeks without a leader like I you know you've you've gone through a, a bunch of change and that's difficult for young people um, when they don't have somebody to lean on um, and so I, I just you know say hey just give me an opportunity to uh, to get to know me and for for myself to get to know you guys because I think you, to be able to lead people you have to first understand them and get to know them and so um, that's why I got here so quick. When we lost to North Carolina, I didn't go back to Los Angeles. I came directly here to Muncie um, to get in front of these guys and, and to kind of give them a sense of security and an understanding of what this program was going to look like moving forward. Because um, they had a bunch of questions, you know, like, am I going to like them? Do they like me? Um, I'm sure they're getting hit from a bunch of different angles of, of people outside the program that had their own thoughts and ideas about what they should be doing. Um, so I just tried to get around them get to know them as, as quickly as possible and start to develop those relationships. And uh, we were able to get three of those young men out of the portal. And, and the fourth guy decided that it may be best for him somewhere else. And so, um, you know, we supported him in that move. And, and uh, we've been working every day uh, since to try to get this program where we, where we all want it. Pretty easy to put together your coaching staff? Uh, yeah, very easy. I mean, not, not, not easy. Um, you know, I, I don't think that's ever easy, but it was, I knew, like, I've been an assistant coach for 18 years. Um, and so the last few years, as I realized, um, as my career was moving closer and closer to having that opportunity to lead my own program, uh, um, you know, I, I've kind of had an idea of, of, you know, depending on where this job was going to be, um, guys I wanted in my program. I, I had general profiles of the type of guys that I want uh, on the staff, uh, what I want their abilities to be. And so when this opportunity came, I had a pretty good idea of, of uh, who I wanted to be a part of it. 
and you know I was given the resources here at Ball State to, to be able to make that happen. So I'm extremely excited to to have our staff. Um, you know, one thing that Mick Cronin left me with uh, was he said, "Hey, don't go hire your best friends. Don't go hire your wedding party. You, you go hire three guys uh, that you believe can be head coaches." And and uh, I think I've been able to accomplish that here at Ball State with Lou Gattino, Jamal Meeks, and Ben Botts. So. Um, really excited about those guys. I think they all kind of complement each other, uh, have different strengths in, in different areas, but are about the right things and are about um, they're in this business for the right reasons, uh, which is was very important to me. Tell us about growing up in Jasper. Tell us about the Jasper community and your, your experience. Uh... Yeah, we moved there in second grade. Um, I was going into second grade uh, when we moved to Jasper. So that's what I call home. Uh, very proud to, to be able to call that community home. It is a, um, you know, it's, it's a very prideful uh, community, uh, very, um, a bunch of just hardworking um, community that, that uh, really supports their high, really, really supports their high school athletics. Um, and it's, it's kind of on the cusp of, you know, if your population gets much bigger, um, there's a lot of other entertainment options possibly. Um, so it's kind of, it's got that small town feel um, where their high school uh, is important to the community and they support it and they back it. Uh, I think it was a really cool place for me to grow up. I couldn't imagine uh, growing up and playing high school sports, you know, anywhere else. Like I loved, I loved that experience. You know, we had outstanding support. I think our gym held 5,000. I think we had like 3,600 season ticket holders my senior year. Um, you know, we traveled well. It was just great atmospheres to play in. Um, you know, it was just that, it's, it's what Indiana high school basketball, like what everybody reads about or sees on TV or movies for that, for that matter. Um, you know, we, we were able to have that type of experience at Jasper and it was, it was still, I think it was a, I think there was single class basketball for one more year, I believe after I graduated. Um, and it was just a really cool, cool experience to, to be able to, to represent uh, Jasper in the way that we were. And, and um, anytime you got to, like you, you think back of, like that's a very pure form of athletics. You know, you're playing with your best friends. You know, nobody's, nobody's on scholarship. You know, you're not, you're not professionals where guys are making money. Um, you're just going out and hooping with your best friends. And, and uh, you know, I loved every minute of it. You know, I've done, I've done lots and lots of interviews. And i tell you, they're, and, you know, you have Northern Indiana, you have Central Indiana, you have Southern Indiana, and I have never, you know, Jasper, Lagodi, Washington Hatchets, uh, you, uh, uh, Vincennes Lincoln, there, there's just, it, it, it's almost like there's a hatred, but it must just be a passion. Yeah, I think it's very passionate. Uh, I think there's some, some great rivalries there. Um, you know, I think you've got very similar communities that are of similar size that, that support, you know, their high school athletics. And, and uh, there's nothing better than when you pull up on a road game uh, and there's a line outside the door before the doors even open. Uh, you know, you're just, you're just arriving, you know, an hour before the JV game. But um, when there's that type of excitement and passion, it doesn't matter the level, like it's a really cool environment to play in. And uh, you, you, you go around to other states and you watch high school games in other states and you realize, um, how lucky you were to play uh, high school basketball in the state where it means so much, you know, and I think um, growing up here and, and that being all that, you know, you kind of take that for granted until you get out in other areas of the country. And so, um, you know, like, <clears throat> I mean, there's, we can go, we can talk story after story of, of playing in the state and it's, it's just different. Like it's hard to explain, but it's, it's just different um, to play high school basketball in Indiana. You know, there's an Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame member who won the 1981 state championship with Vincent Lincoln, Coach Gunnar Wyman, who says on his tombstone. I'd I know exactly what it says on that on that tombstone, and, and I know exactly what my record was against Vincent Lincoln. So, um, yeah, there's no love lost between those two communities. But I mean, uh, what a, what an outstanding coach. Right. And, and you know, to win, to, to have the success that he had and, and uh, all those all those stories are what come in to build the rivalries that um, make sports so special. So, um, yeah, I, I, uh, I know exactly what's on his tombstone and it's, it's a great story. Um, I don't think I'll quite go to that uh, level uh, when my time here is done, but uh, 
it uh, it makes for a great rivalry and and it just shows how much athletics means to to the communities in southern indiana who do you credit your your your, your drive and and you you have a a hard nosed very hard work ethic attitude who do you credit that to you know, I don't know if there's any one individual that I would credit that to. I think, like I said, I've been, you know, fortunate, whether it was when I was a, a child or as I've um, grown up and, and uh, removed myself from playing and got into the coaching business. But, um, you know, I just, there's, there's something inside that, that I have a burning desire to be successful. I have a burning desire to compete um, and to win. Like, I just, you know, like, um, you know, I, I'm the type of guy that, you know, like I'm trying to beat you walking down the hallway. You know, like, um, you know, I, if, if we're keeping score, like, I mean, you know, you're trying to win, <laughs> you know, I, I just, I've never understood the, uh, like, I, I'm the guy, you know, I'm a, I'm a bad sports dad now because I, I don't, I mean, my kids, if they play in a snack league, like, what are we doing? I'm not playing, my kids aren't playing in a snack league. Like, we're keep, like, what do you mean we're not keeping score? Like, who doesn't keep score? Like, you know, I, I, I want, um, I want my kids to, to have an understanding of, of, um, you know, life is competitive, you know, and, and you have to, you know, if you're going to be successful in life, you know, there's, there's going to be adversity that hits. I want, you know, I think there's certain lessons that can be learned from, from a loss, you know, or tough times, like you can learn and grow from those, um, you know, but like coach Knight used to always have a, have a scene. He'd, he'd say, he'd say, Hey, you know, you find me the guy that says winning isn't everything and I'll show you a loser, you know, and I, I don't, um, you know, I, I think there's some, some value in that. You know, and I think, you know, as a coach, you, you have a very big responsibility, obviously, to, to a group of young men, but you also get to use a game uh, to teach life lessons and to provide a foundation for these guys to be successful. I think athletics in general um, is the greatest teaching tool that there is, you know, because you have to, to deal with so many different things, um, success, failure, um, you know, it, it's, and it's not, it's not easy. Like you don't just get to show up and snap your fingers and, and be successful. There's a lot of, a lot of hard work, a lot of preparation, all those things that go in, in uh, to being successful can all be taught through athletics. Was Indiana University your first choice or was there another jersey you would have possibly worn besides? Uh... Yeah, that's a, that's a uh, interesting question. Um, it was my first choice, but it took a little bit to get to the choice. Um, I grew up, uh, I was born in Indianapolis. Like I said, my dad was a high school coach. We bounced around Northern Indiana a little bit. Um, I attended Purdue basketball camps as a child. Um, I became a counselor uh, at, at Coach Katie's camps at a young age uh, before we moved to Jasper, like I said, going into second grade. So um, I, uh, I kind of grew up as a Purdue fan, just being around that stuff. Um, but once I moved to the Southern Indiana, you kind of get swarmed by uh by IU and and uh you know just being an hour and a half away from Bloomington and as I got older and and began to realize that I might have an opportunity to play basketball uh post high school um I started to really kind of look at college basketball differently um and even though I I kind of you know just to be different in southern Indiana would um kind of support Purdue on the side sometimes um when it came time to me having an opportunity to play uh, at the level that I was able to play at uh, when, when coach Knight asked me if I wanted to play in Indiana, it was, it was a very simple yes. And a very quick. Yes. Like I, I, I think I got to go down as one of the easiest recruits in Indiana history. Cause um, I had been up only being an hour and a half away. I think I went to my first, first uh, IU game. I don't know, maybe the end of my freshman year, early my sophomore year. Um, and so being that close, I kind of had a, like an open invite, like whenever I wanted to come to a game, just let them know. And, and um, I'd even gotten to the point where I would just drive up, you know, maybe with a, a friend or two. Um, it wasn't like I went with my parents to every game. And it was late. It was in February of my junior season of high school. And uh, I think they were, they were getting ready to play Minnesota in a midweek game. And so I called up. I wanted to drive up and see the game. And um, Coach Dockey just asked if, for my parents to come, you know, and, and uh, which was not not – you know, like crazy for him to ask that, but it was just a little different at that time. And so my mom and dad went up with me and they lost to, uh, to Minnesota, but Sean Leonard was on that team. And, um, and, and they just, you know, you didn't lose in assembly hall, 
<laughs> I mean, they had like some huge winning streak going on and home winning streak. And so we, we, we were going to get out of there. Cause we, I mean, we, you know, you'd heard all the things about losses and, and, and I use program. And so we were going to get out of there and coach Dockey asked us to stay that coach Knight wanted to speak to us. So we hung around for what seemed like forever. Um, and then coach Knight finally came in the, the players lounge or um, there in the, in the, the bowels of assembly hall and, you know, his hair was all messed up and collars flipped up, his sweaters off, you know, and you could tell he'd kind of been through it and um, comes in, introduces himself. And he, he asked, uh, he asked me if there was places around Jasper where he could shoot birds that he felt like, um, you know, shooting, going hunting the next day, you know, after a loss. And like, I mean, I'm 16, 17 years old. Like, I don't, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't, I'm still not a hunter. Um, but I was like, you know, I just told him like, coach, I don't, you know, really know, but I said, I could probably point you in the right direction. Like you give me, you know, I can contact some buddies or whatnot. And he's just kind of like, you know, you could tell he was a little bit uncomfortable. And he just looked at me. He's like, he's like, Mike, you want to, you want to play ball here? And I was like, yep. And like, he stood up, came over, put his hand on my shoulder. He's like, all right, my boy, shake my mom and dad's hand and started to head out the door. And he stopped at the doorway and he turned around. And he said, now, what do you, you got? What a couple of weeks left of your, your regular season. And you got your, uh, you'll get into your sectional and regional and all that stuff. And we we're like, yeah, yeah. He goes, okay. He goes, well, this is done. You're going to, you're going to come here and you're going to be with us. And, but he goes, um, what you should probably hold off until your season's over um, to make any type of announcement. Once your season's over, uh, Ham will get a hold of you and you can do the whole uh you know, kind of media thing. He goes, because when this gets out, your life's going to change. And uh, he was, he was dead on, man. But I, I knew, you know, I mean, what was that? Middle of February, my junior year of high school, um, you know, it was different than like when he, when he wanted you as a player and when growing up in Indiana, uh, that's where you're going. So it was a pretty, you know, it wasn't some kind of fancy recruiting process. Like you couldn't, you couldn't take phone calls at that time until July 1st going in your senior year. But um, so it was, it was pretty easy. It was as simple as, Hey, you want to play ball here? And, uh, I was, I was done. Where would you have gone to high school if you guys would have stayed in Indianapolis? I, I know no this idea. is not an, I know this is not an important question, but do you remember where you lived at, at in Indianapolis? Yeah. I, my dad was, was, uh, was an assistant coach for Jim Rosen still at Lebanon high school at that time. Um, when I was, when I was born, but, uh, we moved, um, I think he coached at Triton Central, at Bluffton, uh, at Frontier High School, um, before all in Northern Indiana, before we moved to Jasper. Uh, of course, you got your master's and you were a graduate assistant at, at Texas Tech with Coach Knight for a couple of seasons. And your coaching resume is just unbelievable when you read through uh, your stops and who you coached under and coached with. Uh, so what, what do you take? Did you, have you taken a little bit from each stop that you have, do you like have a, you know, a, a file in your mind or in your brain of uh, what you've taken from each coach and tell us about uh, some of your more enjoyable stops? Well, yeah, I think you take a little bit from, from each person. Um, and, you know, there's, there's been things that worked at every stop. There's been things that, that, that haven't worked at every stop. There's things that, um, you know, maybe work for that particular coach that may not fit my personality. Um, like I've said in, in other, in other interviews, like I'm, you know, I think one of my greatest strengths is I'm very comfortable in who I am. Like I'm very secure in my own skin. Uh, I know who I am. Um, and so I think, you know, I've been able to take things from each stop of things that have been successful that I feel like fit me and that I believe in or things that I can take and fit into my personality and, um, you know, kind of put my, my own spin on it. But um, I've been really fortunate to be around the guys that I've been around, you know, whether it was playing and working for Coach Knight to, um, you know, Danny Casper, Stephen F. Austin to, to Mike Miller uh, at Eastern Illinois, who, who ended up, you know, being the head coach uh, of the New York Knicks as, on an interim basis and, and now as an assistant coach in the NBA um, to a quick stop with Porter Moser there, Loyola to Brad Stevens, Brandon Miller, Chris Holtman. Uh, Tim Miles and Mick Cronin. So um, I've been very fortunate. And like I said, like each one of those guys um, has had a great deal of success. Each one of them have done it in a, in a different way. And um, each one of my moves as an assistant, um, you know, I, it's not like I just bolted and took off for another opportunity. Like um, there was a thought process in each one where, okay, like I have this opportunity 
Um, will it allow me to grow as a coach? Um, will it give me different challenges? Will I learn different? Are they different than the guy that I'm working for? Um, and so I feel like I have a very broad understanding of, of success. Um, you know, the fact that I not only played, but I've coached at a high level. I've coached at every level of college basketball. Um, I've got a really good feel for what success looks like in, in college. And, uh, you know, like I said, I'm secure in, in who I am. Um, and I'm not, I'm not shy about uh, expectations. Like I don't, you don't go play at Indiana. Um, if you're shy of expectations, uh, you don't go be an assistant coach at UCLA under 11 national championship banners if you're scared of expectations. So, um, you know, I, I came here to Ball State under the expectation of, of building a winning program and, and I intend to do just that. Are there challenges with raising a family uh, and being a basketball coach? Yeah, you better have a good wife. You better, you better they better have a good mother. Um, and and I, I, uh, I, I've achieved that. You know, that's, uh, that's probably my greatest uh, recruiting win in my life, you know, is, is, uh, is my wife, Nicole. It's, uh, uh, I've known her since fourth grade. Uh, she's been my best friend since fourth grade. Like we didn't, you know, we weren't like boyfriend, girlfriend the whole time or anything like that, but um, she understands exactly who I am. She's been a part of this journey. She's allowed me to, to chase a dream. And, and like what you said, like she, she, uh, she raised, she's raised two daughters. Um, I'm around, um, but I, I don't know if I'm completely 100% present the way um, I know I'm not the way that I would, I would like to be. I try to do, uh, my best and it's it's a balance you know and it, but it's it's nice to uh, my daughters are, are 10 and 14 uh, she'll be a, my 10 year old will be 11 in June um, I'm excited to get them here to Muncie but um, you end up as a coach uh, especially at this level you spend a lot a lot more time around other people's children than maybe your own um, now mine are going to be around the program a lot um, just because if they're not you just don't see them you know but they're getting of an age where they're starting to you know, do their own things um, in sports and school and have a, their own activities and, and they need to do that. Um, and I just try to be as present as I can, but there's a lot of demands on your time um, that take you away from that. So you, you do miss out on that. Um, and it's, it, it's, you know, it's, you know, I, I, I talked to Nicole all the time, like, Hey, you, you, you knew what this was going to be like, you signed up for this, <laughs> you know, our kids did not. Um, but she is, she's done a, an outstanding job, uh, raising, raising my two daughters, um, into, you know, beautiful, intelligent, uh, young girls that, you know, they're in this move here. Like there's, there's days, I think they're excited about it. And then, you know, you, they wake up the next day and they're sad. They're going to leave friends and, and this and that, but, um, you know, they're, they're both, you know, very strong and individuals that are outgoing. So I don't think they're going to have any problem meeting new friends, but, um, you know, that is, uh, those two are all a product of my wife um, and what she's been able to, to do at home uh, while, I, while she's allowed me to go chase a dream. What kind of input does a head basketball coach have on scheduling? Um, everything. You know, I think, I think a lot. I think, um, you know, at different levels, sometimes um, there may be some more administrative input, um, but, um, you know, I'm going to have a very, very large uh, you know, I, I got big ideas on our schedule. Um, and I think that, you know, they'll be different each year as, as we build this program, but uh, you have a lot of input. Now you also, sometimes your hands are tied as far as previous contracts, um, obligations, um, especially like, you know, at UCLA, like you're automatically tied into, you know, several different events a year. Um, you know, whether that's, um, you know, MTE events, early season that are scheduled, you know, years and years in advance um, to different challenges. Like they're automatically um, in that CBS sports challenge with Carolina and Kentucky and Ohio State every year. So, you know, at, at different spots, sometimes you can be handcuffed a little bit, um, but you, you have enough flexibility and input that you can, you can kind of dictate your, your schedule. Um, but it's not as easy as just picking up the phone and, um, you know, calling somebody, hey, let, let's hoop on December 3rd. Right. You know, there's there's other things that that go into it. Um, there's a lot of TV that goes into it. Um, but you you have you have quite a bit of in, input in your own schedule. And it's a it's a huge out, outside of your staff and recruiting is probably the next most important thing. Uh, what's your conference look like? What, how, how do you how strong do you feel the conference is? 
Well, we, we played Akron, who won the MAC tournament. Uh, we played Akron in the first round of the NCAA tournament this year, and, and uh, quite frankly, very lucky to, to win. Um, you know, we a couple got a couple breaks late in the game that allow, allowed us to win the game in, in advance. Um, but it's, it's, it's a good basketball league with, with really good coaches. Um, I call it kind of the mini Big Ten. And what I mean by that is you, you watch the Big Ten, and it's, it's like a grind of a season. They just kind of beat up on each other. Same thing happens in the MAC. Um, you know, they're, they're just a, it's a, there's a lot of parity in the league. Um, and, and just, a, you know, it's a diff, it's a very physical, tough brand of basketball. You, you're, you're travel, you know, you go on the road and you're, you're in good environments against good coaches. Um, and it's, you know, anytime you can win a college basketball game, uh, it should be celebrated because, you know, winning games at this level is not easy. Coach Michael Lewis, I know I've kept you a little bit long. I know you got a busy schedule ahead of you. Best of luck uh, this upcoming season, and uh, the and uh, I thank you so much for your time. In, anytime, you, if you want to do it again, we can talk about a, a whole other range of topics sometime. We just won't talk about graveyard sites. <laughs> no, let's not go there. Okay. Thank you, Coach. I appreciate it. Thank you.